let me start by saying this and we're going to go right into our message on today. I praise God for our bishop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so much of him. I'm not just saying this because I'm up here, but I say this everywhere. This is a man that I truly admire. I love him. I love his spirit. I'm not one that get nervous real quick. I feel I can stand and do what God has for me to do anywhere at any time. Amen. I tell him at the church that I pastor that I ain't scared. <laughs> but it's something about Bishop Jewel all the way. Man, you make me nervous. <laughs> Praise God. I, 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 I thank God. I, I, I'm, I'm excited about what I do. Don't get me wrong. Like I, I'm not scared. Uh, I'm, I'm happy. I love doing what I do. And we are so grateful, amen. I think we're off to a great start. Amen. Uh, session this morning was awesome. Awesome. And Bishop, I want you to know we had more people in participation today than I can remember in being in the Advantage Department. I'm happy. I'm happy. We want to go straight to the word, amen, because I've been told I was long-winded. And I'm going to be through when I get through. But I'm going to get, like my mama said, in a slow hurry. I'm looking at the clock. And I purposed in my heart I wanted to be through at a certain time. So we're going to go straight to the word of God. Amen. We want to give a word. Amen. We want to encourage the people of God. And I heard something said already today. Praise God. Amen. If you've made it this far, you owe God a praise. And I hear if you've made it this far, yeah, you owe it. You owe the praise. Uh, we thank God today. We're going to go to the Word of God from the book of Colossians. The very first chapter. It's got two verses, amen. I want to read until you hear it. Colossians chapter 1, verses 23 and verse number 27. Colossians 23, 27 of the first chapter. And it reads, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature, which is under the heaven, whereof I, Paul, am a minister, and made a minister to whom God, verse 27, will make known what is the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is the hope of glory. Amen. I want to take a thought, amen, from that verse 27. And my hope is in Jesus, Amen. the hope of glory. Yeah. Preach, sir. Preach, sir. So I'm expecting better. Oh, my, my hope is in Jesus, yes. Yes. the hope of glory. So I'm expecting better. A few months ago, amen, we were blessed in four city number one to have our leader to speak during one of our fellowship meetings. And he spoke to us from the thought, better days are coming. So I'm gonna piggyback off of that. I just believe in my heart that better days are coming. Paul writes to the church in Colossae, amen, and he encourages and admonishes them in their faith. He writes to them to strengthen their hope in the gospel of Jesus Christ and what he has done by way of the cross of Calvary. To encourage them to continue in 
in the faith, somebody say continue. Amen. Continue in the faith to be grounded because the foundation in which Christ has laid, no other man can lay. It is a proven foundation. It is a foundation, amen, that standeth sure. To be settled, amen, and not be moved by every wind and doctrine that comes our way. We must believe and recognize, amen, that there are a lot of things floating around out in the air. Uh -huh. There are things, amen, that, and it's amazing how it is that somebody can help me say, church folk. Church folk. We'll pick up every doctrine, amen, that's not directly associated with the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. We hear things, amen, and I don't understand it how we can sit. In a service, amen, knowing that the unadulterated word of God is going forth and we reject it. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to say that. Amen. amen. We'll sit there, amen, and, and we reject the truth, amen. We reject the gospel, amen. And we are, are, are somewhat like Paul told Timothy, we'll believe a lie before we believe the truth. But I want a certain notice on the devil, amen, that this gospel is not a fairy tale. Amen. This gospel is true. Yep. This gospel is real. You can read Alice in Wonderland all you want, but when you read Genesis, Amen. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, when you cross over into the New Testament, you read first uh, the first four books of the gospel of the Pentateuch, and not the Pentateuch, but the first four gospels, amen, where you can see it. When you read those gospels, amen, it's not like reading Alice in Wonderland. Because when you read the gospel, amen, there's something that takes place. Something happens when you read, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Look, you can't read Alice in Wonderland and get the same thing. He encourages them, amen, to hold on to their faith, to be grounded because of the foundation which Christ has laid. No other man can lay. He wants to settle us. If there ever was a time we need to be settled, we need to be settled now. We're, unlike our bishop said, coming out of a pandemic. And we need to be settled. We need to know who we are in God. We need to know, amen, who we are in the presence of God, amen. And somebody help me say, at all times. At all times. Look, I know we're in a pandemic, but look, pandemic can steal my faith. Yeah, we're in the middle of a pandemic, amen, but I still got my shout. I still have my hallelujah. I still have my thank you, Jesus, even in the midst of the pandemic. And I heard somebody say it earlier, man, because all you really need is a memory. Oh, praise God. And if you let your mind wander back, amen, there's some things that God has done for you. No other man can do. Amen. Because God is real, and he's real all the time. He wanted to encourage them to be settled, amen, to uh, strengthen them, amen. Uh, to let them know, amen, that he was yet on their side. First Peter 5 and 10, amen, said, But the God of all grace, who has called us to his eternal glory, by Jesus Christ, that after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Look, God wants to do something for you. Where? Right in the midst of the pandemic. Somebody help me say, right in the midst of the gathering. To continue in faith, amen. Continue, amen, in the truth, amen. And thy word is true. Yeah. I found out, amen, that watch this. Where there is false teaching, there is false belief. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Hmm? If there's some false teaching going on, there's some false living going on. I found out, amen, that thanks be unto God for being saved. Thank be unto God, amen, for understanding what the gospel has done for us, even in the midst of a pandemic. And now watch this. It is impossible to be powerfully anointed and still enjoy the pleasures of the faith. 
Huh? You can't be anointed and called far down from heaven if you are pleasing the flesh. Amen. That in order for some things to have life, some things have to die. Amen. Amen. A seed before it's uh, uh, put into the ground. Amen. It has to die. The scientific term is called germinate. The seed dies, and after it dies, and something starts taking place. Praise God. Roots start to develop. And if you watch it close enough, then it start busting through the ground. All they cause it, it dies.
about said, check it. Oh, we hope she'll check out the phone. <laughs> because we didn't have to worry about self check. But the one that was always doing the sport and the one that was always good, we would double team him. So that person, that man that I self checked, the devil ain't worried about them. Mm. He's right. worried about the ones that know how to tear his kingdom down. Yes, and it is at the word of God, the logo saying that, which is all creation came to be. And it's because of the hope of glory, I'm excited about my future. It is because of the hope of glory, God has taken me to another level in him. Oh, I might be going through right now, but it's not indicative of where God wants me to be. How do you know what God heard Jeremiah say in 29 and 11? For I know the thoughts that I have toward you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. In other words, God said, I have a plan for your life. God says, amen, I have something that I want you to do. And what I want you to do, amen, I have to prepare you before I can promote you. So, Paul writes to the Colossian church, and he lets them know, amen, that Jesus Christ, he is the hope of glory. That Jesus Christ, amen, now, I really want you to get this because if he's the hope of glory, and if I ask you where was Jesus, and if you say it inside of you, then you have the hope of glory inside of you. Hallelujah, amen. We must understand, amen, that Jesus Christ is the hope of glory. And since he is the host of glory, amen, I can expect better, and I believe in my heart better is coming. Thank God for season. We can tell times by seasons. We know some of it because it's getting hot. We know some of it, man, because the days are getting longer. We know when it's fall because the leaves on the trees tend to turn color and fall to the ground. We understand it, man, in winter because the winter it gets cold. And every now and then we get a little snow. We understand the seasons, amen, because seasons bring about a change. We understand spring because the trees begin to bud, leaves begin to sprout out. In this season time of spring, the grass is beginning to grow. Hallelujah, amen, we understand these seasons, but I found out through the gospel and through the whole glory that there is another season. Somebody help me say another season. And this season is called due season. And I want you to know the Bible in class in Galatians 6 and 9. To be not weary and well doing for in due season. You shall reap if you faint not. It is in due season that the hope of glory of Jesus the Christ is manifested in the life of the believer. It is in due season, amen, when it looks like everything that can go on will go wrong, but I have something down on the inside that is called the hope of glory. And because I have the hope of glory, I am expecting that. It doesn't look good right now, and it doesn't feel good right now, but because I have, I have this hope. I can rest assured that I'm sitting back in my easy chair, and my easy chair it's called the hope of glory. I sit down in my easy chair and I can see the hope of glory. And when I don't feel like going, I feel a kid up and go because of the hope of glory. Thank God for hope. Hallelujah. There's something about hope that lets me know that hope triggers my faith.
Deus sempre na minha vida. Né?